My nephew asked me to do a 100 kilometer test and I'm going to show you how simple it is to change it over to kilometers for miles. Go to vehicle information and go to push the up button and see options right there. And go over here you'll see that we click that. You click the check mark right here. This is, then you go back over here. I push the down arrow. Bring it back to vehicle information. And it'll tell us what kind of fuel economy, well, fuel economy, what kind of range we're going to get um, driving 100 uh, kilometers an hour. And I'm going to be doing 150 miles. So what is that? Uh, 30, 200 and... Uh, 40, 240 kilometers? We'll find out. Uh, anyway, uh, off we go to Grand Forks. I did forget to mention one thing before we head off the road. It's 15 degrees centigrade. And uh, I do not need the AC on at this point, but I do have the fan on. I have it set on one. I might be upping that. And we are going to be off. As I travel down the road at 100 kilometers an hour, uh, you can see it says it estimates have 285 kilometer range based on what I've done in the last 150 miles probably. Anyway, I wanted to give uh, my nephew one suggestion. If you're going to buy a Bolt e, uh, EV rather than the EUV, make sure you get this one right here. This is where you have your lane, lane assist, which keeps you in the lane. And get adaptive cruise control. Because if you get those two items on the Chevrolet Bolt, which is probably right now, because I, I have an ID4, Volkswagen ID4, I prefer to drive my Chevrolet Bolt uh, around here, you know, short trips. But on a long trip, the ID4 is more comfortable. But short trips, I prefer to drive this. If you get the um, Chevrolet Bolt e EV, not the EUV, but the EV, I would get the uh, adaptive cruise control. I, I hear you can get that. I know it's a little bit more money. Uh, and lane assist. And the reason I mention that is because Comma AI, which has open pilot, one person's working on something that you can put in your car, the new version of the Comma AI, that will give you a level two autonomy without the huge expense of... Um, since they don't offer it in the uh, Chevrolet Bolt e EV. They offer it in the EUV, they offer Super Cruise. But, um, but if you just can get the EV, which is the best value right now for electric cars in the United States anyway, probably in Canada also, that's where he's from. Um, make sure you get the adaptive cruise control and lane assist. And that way, eventually, you can get the open pilot. It'll have it written for the uh, bowl. And uh, you can have it uh, level two autonomy, which is hands-free, by the way. Uh, open pilot is hands-free. They monitor your eyes. But anyway, as we travel down our road, we'll, we'll see what the um, what it does. I don't uh, Actually, the temperature is up to 18 degrees. Uh, it was in my garage, so it was probably a little cooler. So we have 18 degrees. I do not have the AC on. I have the van on three, and it's perfectly fine. So uh, we'll see what happens when we get to Grand Forks. I made it to Grand Forks, and we drove 119 kilometers. Now it says 13.5 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is a, when I exited the freeway, it was at a 138. And we're going to use that as our, so 138 watt hours per kilometer is what it really is because in town it I did a lot of regeneration um, one thing interesting about the batteries here this is 50% and each one of these is five so that one doesn't count we're about 60% battery right now it is 21 degrees centigrade and what we are going to do is uh, reset because on the way back we had a six mile an hour north by northwest wind so we had a little bit of a tailwind coming down i'm going to reset and drive back with ac on and probably at level two and just to see how much above 
138 watt hours per kilometer we get going back. Talk to you later. Okay, we're finally ready to leave Grand Forks. 21.9 kilometers have been driving around with the AC on. It is uh, 23 degrees Celsius and I have it set at 20 degrees. The air conditioner set at 20 degrees Celsius centigrade, whatever you want to call it. Um, 20 degrees is like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have it set at level three and I am ready to head back. You can see that 1% of the energy. Uh, I think we've used two kilowatt hours since we've been here in town. Now we're at 18.6 and we've driven 141 kilometers. Now we're on the way back. As I travel north, uh, I'm going still going 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 and a half miles an hour for us in the United States, North America, not North America because kilometers are up in Canada. Um, it is 24 degrees Celsius. I have the air conditioner set at 20 degrees. Fan speed set at three. We are on 1% climate setting. That's how much it's using so far. And um, you can see that our energy, at, even at 100 kilometers an hour, it's 153 watt hours per kilometer. So it's a little higher than the, the 138 going down. But all is well. We'll see what happens at the end. All right, we concluded our test. We went 252.5 kilometers. We used 37.3 kilowatt hours for the trip. 2% was for climate control. It's 24 degrees. And we did have the AC set at 20 degrees. Celsius. So our return trip was 15.9 or 159 watt hours per kilometer and we our trip out of the city was 133.4 kilometers. So I am going to figure that out and see how many uh, it averaged for the 252.5 kilometers, 37.3 kilowatt hours. I'll post it on the screen above, but thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this helps. Bye.